Hi, I'm Vanessa and welcome to my YouTube channel, Words by Vanessa. Today's topic is going to be about cowspiracy. My husband and I just watched this documentary on Netflix and I got to tell you, it scared the crap out of me because I, it made me realize how I have desensitized myself to the fact that when I go to the grocery stores, I've been going for the last, I don't know, 25 years and uh, choosing meals for myself and for my family. When I go to the grocery store and I go look for a, a pork chop or go look for ground beef or go look for ribs, I go looking for the most bloodiest piece of meat that feels like it was just now carved up and cut for me. If there's even a hint of brownness or discoloration, because you and I both know that that means it's decaying flesh, somehow I have been able to compartmentalize the fact that when I go looking for ground beef, it comes from a cow. When I go looking for those perfect chops or the perfect um, ribs to cook in the oven or in the barbecue, it comes from a pig. Bacon comes from a pig. And I don't know how I, who I think I'm pretty aware of myself and my life and my situation, how have I become so separated from the fact that this food that I eat is an actual living, breathing um, animal that's part of our environment? What do you think about that? Fronted with the fact that in Cowspiracy, an animal needs so much ground cover, so much water every single day, so much food every single way, every single day to give us a set amount of meat over a course of a couple of months for a certain amount of dollars. Completely separated my fact, myself from that. And even though you know in your head that that's what it is, because I know in my head that's what it is, somehow I've been able to just put it to the side. So when we're looking at, um, an animal-based diet versus a plant-based diet, by watching Cowspiracy, it has made me reevaluate how I will be feeding my family and my, myself and how I have to hold myself accountable for my environment and for my place in this world. So this week, my husband and I have actually been talking about and have implemented after thorough discussions about what is the difference between an animal-based uh, diet versus a plant-based diet. What exactly do we need from a nutritional standpoint and what separates us from actually going gung-ho? So after doing some research last week, we came up with three factors. The things that people are most concerned with when it comes to either a plant-based diet or an animal-based diet are proteins, the enough consumption of proteins, your vitamins and minerals, and your essential amino acids. So what exactly is protein? Protein is, proteins are building blocks for our body. They're responsible for our skin, for our muscles, for our tendons and our organs. So it's a pretty important thing. When I was looking at the dietary, the DAR, which is a dietary reference intake, you multiply 0.36 times your weight. For example, I weigh 175, 175 pounds. So if you multiply 0.36 times 175, you come up with 62 grams of protein that I should consume every single day. Now it doesn't matter if it's protein from an animal-based diet or 62 grams of protein from a, from a plant-based diet. It's 62 grams of protein. Now in the most sedentary lifestyle, I'm talking when you do absolutely nothing, but go to work, come home, eat, sit on the couch, nothing. You don't, there's no exercise, there is no um, walking, riding your bike, yoga, nothing like that. At the most sedentary base, for a man, the amount of protein that he should be consuming every day for just living and breathing is 56 grams. A woman is 46 grams. If you're having an optimal life where you're engaged and, and alive and, and you're working and, and exercising and eating right and really focusing on having the best optimal life for yourself, a man should have um, a minimum of 70 grams and a woman should have 65 grams. So I'm just above the sedentary amount of protein that I should have every day, although I am very active and I am focusing on having an optimal healthy lifestyle. So we talked about what are the three things that people are concerned the most between 
an animal-based uh, diet and a, and a plant-based diet. They're protein, ensuring that you have enough vitamins and minerals and your amino acids and enzymes. So when you look at protein from an animal base, of course you get it from your meat, your fish, poultry, um, pig, you have a vast amount of, of protein sources. When you're in a vegetarian diet, you get your protein from um, fruits and vegetables. You get it from things like beans, from quinoa, tofu-based products, uh, peas, artichokes, spinach, broccoli. Did you know that one cup of broccoli will give you four grams of protein? I mean, I did not know this until I started research what would be beneficial for us. And also iron, which is so important for women in, in their whole life span. Iron can be had from lentils, soybeans, quinoa, brown rice, oatmeal, pumpkin seeds, cashews, almonds. Can you see how these things are all interconnected and mixing and you can get a little bit of everything? Also from B12, which is something that is, you hear about all the time for people that are on a vegetarian diet or they're on a vegan diet that they're not getting enough vitamin B12. These things can be had from cheese, milk, brewer's yeast. Now, of course, you can get these things from uh, meat, mackerel, um, liver, those kind of things, which is very important. But when we are evaluating whether or not we can actually implement more of a plant-based diet and minimize our animal-based diet. So the research for us was very interesting. This week, to further solidify the information that I'm trying to understand, I did a small experiment for you and for me. And it was about how much protein is there, for example, in a chicken breast. So I took a chicken breast, no bones or anything, just a solid chicken breast. And I weighed it on a plate as I weighed lentils and peas. It was 10 ounces of chicken breast. And if you look above, 10 ounces is about 310 grams. And it, can, it amasses 88 grams of protein. Now the lentils and peas that you see above, it was nine ounces. It's 280 grams approximately. And it, and it gives me 42 grams of protein. Now, if you look at the amount of chicken versus the amount of lentils and peas, and you look at it in the course of the day, if the minimum amount you're supposed to have, or let's go optimal, optimal amount you're supposed to have to have the healthiest, most optimum lifestyle, for a man it's 70 grams, for a woman it's 65 grams. So this one piece of chicken, what's 10 ounces, will give you 88 grams of protein for the day, which is surpasses what you're supposed to have. And the lentils and peas at nine ounces will provide me with 42 grams of protein. So when you look at that, lentils and peas, that's one meal. I have two other meals that I can have. And if you average it out at about 40 grams per meal, that's still 120 grams of protein in the day, which is more than what you need. So when we're looking at the animal base versus plant base, it's same, same. It's consuming a great amount of proteins, vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, and both diets. But it did let me see that I can actually have everything that I need from both diets. So my takeaway this week is that it is the same, same. It's just different in how it affects you as a person, how it affects your family, how it affects your environment, and how it affects the globe in general. So I hope that you were able to get a little more information on the difference between an animal-based diet versus a plant-based diet, how realistically it can be implemented into your household relatively easily without that much of a palate change, which I thought was very, very interesting. And to be completely honest, above, you will see a picture of a breakfast that Carl and I had, um, and also Selma. And it was vegetarian, it was super healthy and yummy, colorful and bright, and it took me 15 minutes to make, which that alone, wow, is no different than it comes to us making a normal breakfast with my favorite, which are eggs and a piece of toast and fruit. I hope that you liked what, we ha what I had to say today. Thursday, every single Thursday, tune in because you know I'm gonna have some snippet of information for you to understand and enjoy and perhaps learn something from. Tell three people about what you learned today. As I always tell you with all the love of my heart, be good and don't forget to put a little bit of love into it.